My name is Barry Winrow and this is my story. I was first introduced to rugby league when a gym teacher at our senior school played for Wigan, for Wigan Rugby's names, the late great David Stevens. Um, and we played at school. From then you just, things evolve and you go on to uh, amateur clubs. I played um, for a club called Worsley Mains at Coronation Park and on the 23rd of September 1973 that was when I became a, a tetraplegic. My lesion is C5-6 which left me paralysed from nipple level down no finger movement, no wrist extension, and no tricep. On that day, I was playing on the wing, and an opponent kicked the ball for touch, and our own picked the ball up. As I turned round, I was tattled and went down awkward. It brings back bad memories, not bad memories this, but I thought I broke my collarbone, but when I hit the deck, I couldn't feel my legs, and it felt as though my knees was in the fetal position. And I, it was, I found it hard to breathe. There were no first responders in the, in 73 on a touchline. So they just thought it was, I'd been winded. I was taken to Wigan Infirmary. In the 70s, we all had longer. From that day on, my street cred just went <laughs> because they shaved both sides of my head, drilled my skull and put an arseshoe clamp on you. And that all shoe clamp, they tied a string to it over a pulley, stretch your neck out to relieve pressure on that, on that vertebra. And it was like that for a few months with clamps at the side of my head so it couldn't twist your head. Traumatic times then. After nine months, I came out to hospital. Not knowing, frightening really, because you don't know, even though you were able-bodied before, I knew nothing about disability. I didn't even know anyone who was disabled. I lived with my mum and dad, and my mum and dad looked after me. Plus my family, and I had lots of mates who, who gave me lots of support, which you need at that time. The, the people of Wigan and surrounding areas were really, really good with me. Um, the, uh, I was lucky because um, a, great, a good friend of mine, Keith Alden, who played for Wigan, um, and Colin Clark, um, they, they were the mainstays of, of my fundraising. Um, also Jack Keane and, and one or two other people. Um, uh, I didn't get visit, visits from hospital. Uh, when people came to hospital to see me, um, uh, Billy Boston came, um, Green Vigo, and uh, and Colin Clark came with with the Wigan lads uh, because they were I think they were training at the time uh, on the Southport Sand Dunes. But uh, and that's the mor that's the morale you need when you first have an injury. Your family and friends can only do so much, but it's the system. And as I, as I see now, uh, the Benevolent Fund, that wasn't around then. So you just had to cope in, emotionally really and, and financially in the best you could. I'd heard about the Benevolent Fund, but I thought it was for professionals only. Um, until... Um, a friend of mine, Jim Ormbe, who played for Wigan, um, he 
contacted me and said, listen, a friend of his, who was a professional rugby player, John Burke, had a, was a similar injury to me. So he said, could I have a chat with him, trying to put him, give him my experience over the years, so he could cope with his life, so which I did. But because I had a project going on at that time, um, I lost contact with John. I left Pemberton and went living with mum and dad for 12 months. And I never, John just didn't know where I lived. So then my wife, who's a district nurse, went into John doing the procedure and she told him who she was and where I lived. So John phoned me up then and said, the Benevolent Fund's been looking for you for a while. Where have you been? That was my first introduction to this man, Steve Ball. And all superheroes don't wear capes. Steve came and, and had a chat with me and see if, I, see if I wanted anything. Now, when he came, I didn't think you was giving me anything, any support, I thought I was going to be giving it them. Because of all my, I've, you know, I've had my accident now 50 years. I thought I was telling him, and, and all the new injuries, the best way to get on with the life, just like I've done. So, but no, the, the Benevolent Fund have been really good to me. It's so great that the, 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 the the, the support you get off them. You can phone at any time. You can phone them up and know that somebody's going to be there to, to give you that support. The main thing is they gave me support in, mentally and emotionally, really, because that's what you need. But financially, they've helped me out with quite a few things, especially me. me outdoor wheelchair, which I've had adapted and now my main sport is fishing. So, and, and people say, well, how can you fish if you can't use your hands? Well, I designed an implement what fastens to my hand and also fastens to the fishing rod so I can unclip it. And then I designed part of a reel where I could put my thumb through the ring, what used to be the handle, and then so I can twist it. So you learn techniques. When you become a tetraplegic, you're always learning techniques all the time. So then that's what I did. So, but when you get to the water side, the ground's never level. And you can't sit. If you fall, you're going in that drink. So you just got to watch what you're doing. Um, so they've provided me with the funding to get this wheelchair, which it has a rise and fall scissor jack on it, and it tilts for, forward and back. So you can, uh, when you hit the, hit, hit the grass, you can tilt back, get your balance. Then you've got to have all the implements around you, what you've designed, so you can fish on your own. And that's what I've done. Yes. In your, in your life, if you've ever crossed your leg and when you took it away after a few minutes, you'll see the red patch on your knee. That's circulation. And that happens to a lot of tetraplegics and paraplegics. It's, it stops the circulation. And if you don't lift up or if you've not got the right um, equipment, you get pressure sores. Get pressure sores leads to sepsis and you die. Just as simple as that. But I needed a hoist because my shoulder was never going to get better with keep lifting up all the time off it. So I told the Benevolent Fund about, about the hoist and they came good. They just said, listen, you need a hoist, we'll get you one. So they've just got me a hoist now. Um, and it's, it's not only changed my life, 
it changed my wife's life because she's the curer and I don't think anyone looks at the curer. When people talk to me, they say, oh, how's Barry? They never ask about the curer. It's always, how are you? And they, they deserve every acknowledgement they can get because they're, they're, they're the spine. And without them, you're just like a pack of dominoes. Take that away and everything falls. Um, we go to, to Wembley for the weekend. Um, we go to Magic Weekend um, and the Grand Final. And it's surprising when you go there and you haven't seen someone for a, maybe 12 months and then you get chatting to them, find out what they've done, what their problems are. And there's always somebody wanting to, to talk. Occasionally, I might go and watch an amateur match um, at, at Rose Bridge at Ents. Um, and I watch the professional stuff um, sometimes, but mainly on television. Um, but yeah, I, I love the game. Um, I see, when I see uh, tackles now, it makes me shudder a little bit sometimes because I think it's so simple to have that accident. And when, you, when I see pundits on television going on about, or oh, the lying down and uh, uh, the playing the game, they won't get somebody sent off. They won't come and spend a couple of days with me. They'll figure out what, what the turmoil is when, uh, when it does happen. So, but that's the name of the game. If, if we could turn back time, I'd be playing it again. Not at 70 like, but <laughs> I'd be playing it again. Um.